Hello friends, welcome to our YouTube channel, Metalized Engineering. Today in this video, we will discuss about the effect of alloying elements on the iron carbon diagram. So first, I would like to uh, let you know that there are two kinds of alloying elements. First is substitutional. And second is interstitial. So, in these two kinds of uh, uh, elements, we will see the effect of these two kinds of uh, elements on the iron carbon diagram. So, basically, we know about the substitutional elements which can replace the parent atom. Basically, like this is the matrix, and and any substitutional element comes and it can replace this atom by another atom so this is substitution in brief and about the interstitial like uh, these are the places which are interstitial places any element comes from the outside and sits here these are the interstitial so this is about the brief idea about substitutional element and interstitial element now we will see the effect of first about substitutional elements in the iron carbon diagram so there are two kinds of substitutional element which are categorized by the stabilizer like first is ferrite stabilizer and second is this austenite stabilizer so first we will see about the ferrite stabilizer what is ferrite stabilizer so some alloying elements tends to stabilize ferrite phase in the iron carbon diagram in preference of austenite in preference to austenite so means that when we add this ferrite stabilizer they would like to stabilize the ferrite phase then austenite so many of these elements have the same crystal structure so we will talk about the crystal structure also so what is the crystal structure of the ferrite stabilizer so generally these are of bcc kind generally these are of bcc kind maybe some other like dc crystal structure some elements having dc crystal structure they are also uh, act as a ferrite stabilizer so now we will see like what are the elements so elements and their critical composition so first is chromium that is 12.7 percent is required as a ferrite stabilizer moly that is three percent tungsten that is six vanadium two and as i told you that some 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 elements having the dc and crystal structure so those are like silicon having a DC structure with 3% of silicon is required uh, to act as a ferrite stabilizer and uh, about all these BC crystal structure is there and for this one silicon example and this one so how this ferrite stabilizer act to stabilize the ferrite region so we will see uh, in the diagram also but before that one what is the simple thing like uh, they reduce they reduce the extent of the austenite region or area on the equilibrium diagram basically 
by forming a gamma loop so we will see that uh, how this gamma loop is forming and where as i uh, told before that uh, ferrite stabilizer reduce the extent of austenite area on the equilibrium diagram by forming a gamma loop so as we add just for an example here i have taken chromium as a ferrite stabilizer so for 12.7 percent of chromium act as a strong ferrite stabilizer so it is forming a gamma loop we can see this is the gamma loop and here alpha is having this region so alpha is a ferrite so the area of alpha is more and gamma is forming a loop so the area of this gamma is very less so this is how it works as a ferrite stabilizer and austenite is enclosed within the loop at chromium content greater than 12.7 percent minimum at least minimum this percentage is required so greater than 12.7 percent the delta ferrite and the alpha ferrite region merge together actually like there is no we can see there is no delta so this uh, uh, this alpha iron and delta iron both they merge together and becomes continuous such composition exists only in the bcc form from the lowest temperature up to the melting point so this is the melting point from lowest temperature to melting point so uh, as austenite cannot be produced in uh, such compositions so they are not heat treatable they are not heat treatable so this point you can remember and uh, the critical composition at which the austenite phase disappears so that i have already shown here for romium for moly tungsten and vanadium these are the critical compositions so next we will see about austenite stabilizer so first what is austenite stabilizer and what are the elements which comes under this category and the crystal structure of austenite stabilizers so as in the ferrite stabilizer the elements which stabilize the ferrite region more and uh, makes the loop of austenite those are the ferrite stabilizer but what about the austenite stabilizer which enlarges which enlarges the area of austenite and those are actually which elements we can say those are austenite stabilizer okay austenite stabilizer so we will see what are the common elements which act as the austenite stabilizer so manganese and nickel these are the two most common substitution element which act as the austenite stabilizer so that we will see the crystal structure of uh, for both of these so the fcc the most common fcc crystal structure for both of these elements so they enlarge the area of the austenite phase on the phase diagram so i have already uh, made one picture for you for representing this region so in this we can see fe and ni this is fe and i phase diagram so here the austenite stabilizer is ni then i is the austenite stabilizer so uh, when sufficient amount of nickel or manganese so here we will talk about the nickel only is present austenite may be present at room temperature as the low temperature reactions so uh, we can see that this is the austenite so this is like compressing this region continuously and this austenite region is stabilizing so this is how the area of austenite or gamma increases so this is called the austenite stabilizer and one more thing i would like to add here that nickel is having a purely fcc structure but about mn 
this is having a BCC and FCC both kind of uh, behavior so the BCC uh, phase delta is stable only for this MN case above 1140 degree centigrade and if we will see about the MN for FCC stability this is for that is um, around the gamma phase that is 1100 to 1140 degree centigrade so these points need to be remembered about the MN in case of Austin stabilizer and nickel is uh, FCC that is uh, in fact this is no problem so now we will see about the about the interstitial element which affects the iron carbon diagram as an alloying element so we have talked about the substitution element now we will see about the interstitial elements so there are basically two kind of interstitial elements that is carbon and nitrogen so only these two kinds of interstitial element which is having a uh, most dominant role in the iron carbon diagram as a stabilizer so these um, uh, both interstitial elements also act as a austenitic stabilizer or austenite stabilizer so generally if we will see the iron carbon diagram so in that iron carbon diagram that carbon is seems to be extend the temperature range over which gamma is stable so as uh, you will see that carbon percentage increases uh, over the temperature so you will see this gamma FCC that is stable as compared to the range for pure iron so generally you can uh, think about or you can uh, take the fact here that interstitial element which is carbon and iron those are also the austenitic stabilizer and this gamma phase is stable so this is all about today's video so in this we have think uh, we can think more about the substitutional and interstitial alloying elements uh, in the iron carbon diagram how they affect actually so we have uh, so all about the substitutional and interstitial alloying element effect on the iron carbon diagram so please stay connected with us and if you have any doubts write in the comment box and like share subscribe our youtube channel thank you